five player. Okay, what we got? Plenty of people would argue at various times he's been the best. G2 on defense, loud on attack. And we get a raid boss on QCK. So Sadak takes the hit. Drops QCK a ghost. And knife goes in towards showers, but sometimes it's better to get hit by that knife. Yeah, at least. Whoa. Crunch goes in. Oh, my. Absolute shots. I mean, we've got to shout out Trent's flash here as well. That was huge. Yeah, and this is one of the better things with Dizzy, right? So he sends the Dizzy out like this. These two are facing over towards here, so back to the Dizzy, but it still full blinds them just because of the way the Dizzy works. This has... I don't want to hype this one up too much, but this has a lot of potential. Could take him down, but of course, this would be a miracle from him early on. They got util though. Dizzy out first. Paint shells also available, oh. <laughs> but not necessary. It's brass tax. Yeah, that honestly, that one sounds about right. That one sounds about right. Crucial element of that round is G2. Actually, actually thought it would go down very, very much like that. That's going to weigh okay. in the back of Loud's mind for the rest of this half. That that could be pulled out again at any moment. So immediately, aside from just winning this round, obviously the big advantage of getting the pistol, they've immediately planted that seed in Loud's head that they're going to have to be weary of a play like this coming later. The conditioning has already begun. Nice timing there, of course, through the TP. And a clean finish for G2. Loud, of course, mentioned that this team's developed a lot. I think we're going to be looking at Icy and continuing to follow his development, how he fits into this, the structure of this G2 roster. It's a great start, though, and he's got himself an outlaw. And that outlaw could be quite pivotal moving forward here. Jonah P takes a lot of damage. Yeah, he at least survives, though. Three people here, they decide to speed up as well. I imagine this would be some kind of... Wait. Yeah, I mean, honestly, though, let's get to kill. Spike down, so as long as G2 don't overstep, they should be so fine to keep this one clean. Um, saying that, Leaf's kind of giving them... Hey, and they don't want him to pick up the gun. Throw that one off the map, which honestly, pretty solid idea because two of his teammates. But is it really? He could have. I mean, so they would three people were one shot. Position on this next round, and then they were all going to buy heavy armor. If you have light armor, it's that You're one shot kill, right? And so, it, Loud could have found themselves in a situation where they would have had to forego some utility to get that full armor so they don't go down to the outlaw. So that's essentially why he did that. If you're, you know, questioning why you opted yeah. to throw that off the map instead of getting some kills. And we'll see what they're going to be able to buy up now. Tons of SMGs in the hands of G2, the Stingers, which can be annoying to deal with in the little cubbies on this map. You know, if they go for maybe a, a stack of a couple players playing a crossfire and hookah where the short range guns thrive, that could be one, where they, uh, one way, excuse me, where they try to take advantage of this to win a bonus. There. On the armor side of things, only two is. Yeah, I mean, it would, would have only been one. Um, okay, so it's Stingers, but it's it's an NA team, Stingers. So. Knife here. Again, Lau, one of the few teams really leaning into that KO there. Spot nothing from that knife on Hookah. Yeah, it was that early knife that gets back Hookah and. Octagon as well. They've now cut noise and are just contacting up Kaunzine with a great first kill. And now Contact, G2, they've responded contact by disrespect to the smoke. Which I really like trying to gain control of that side of the map. Instant reaction, two well plus and push, but they don't really want to be, want be taking be any of these long range jaws, so maybe they can't actually way, push in reaction too much. They're kind of just going to turtle up and wait. Yeah, because again, with the jaws like this, they're probably going to lose. And, that was and we'll, keep, we'll just keep an eye. G2 can't win this round, but we'll just keep an eye on how much damage they do. So Sadak spots at least one of the players that was sent into Hooker after that first pick was found by Loud. Now, though, it looks like they want to land on A. I see trending back towards the side here is the flash. Forced back behind the smoke. There's Kawanzine waiting for it. I see Valen to work with here. Pretty and that's one. Suspicious bonus round from G2. Have to let this one go though. If needs must. Now Valen in the smoke. Very common. Cryo loves this particular play. For example, 
Double armory by one gun. Really enough. Whichever second player that was that had pushed all the way down from Hookah. Because neither team right now are running a Sentinel on Bind. And it's not too common these days. Sometimes you'll see the Cypher, like Moose likes to play that. Which I actually did against Loud the last time they played Bind. But playing Bind here and Icebox next, Loud aren't going to suffer from their lack of desire to play Sentinel that often can rear its head where they forego the Cypher in a meta where he's very strong. And it's just going to be about them watching the flanks like Townsend just did in that situation there. You know, like a breeze that might expose that a little bit more. Oh, sleep. big buy rounds you normally expect. The best kind of strat that they have planned. And I like this from G2, just the early, the early smokes. It can use G2 nice and early to get out of here. And whoa. His gun was blocking that for a lot of this. But like he had no idea they double satcheled all the way over. Yeah, still no plant on this. And these smokes are going to go at one point. So what are they going to do? Wait, what are they actually going to do? Trent doubled up and I see also still playing from showers. That's somewhere that Loud have not cleared. He may rear its head in just a moment. Is he in? Sadak out. But the fire back from Loud is impressive. Shot, man. It's a pretty darn good breeze to blow him into the right spot here. Down to 56 in a 1v3. Hey, I mean, shout out to Loud here. They just know they were going to exec on them at one point in terms of the double flash or what? To go for that flood back into the front of a site, a bit of a you know the pre-take if the spike was going down, but they didn't wait for. Is my stream lagging? Oh really? They forced the issue pretty early, so they ended up running into. Everything's fine, my end. With their guns out, no one in that awkward forward default position trying to plant. So perhaps a little bit rushed. You could see what they wanted to do, but that timing just. Didn't really work out for it, and now they're relegated to this save. A few sheriffs, a FPS couple issues. Yeah, I got and nothing in my end. I, I don't know, maybe really maybe a Twitch thing. Everything looks fine. Up into B long with that stim beacon to get them the speed to get there. And can overload as well. That B long in terms of. Oh, it lagged for YouTube power. too, so maybe it is. Maybe something well, went off. Pull out of that one. Smoke came down from G2. As long as it's all good now, roll call. In the front side of that B site, not that ladder aware. This is ultimately going to lead them in. Ostensibly the correct direction. Wait, Prius is full, well, honestly. That sounds like the safest one. That's a nice like flash over the, the top one. And it's something to have a lot easier time planting the hit early. They get one nade out of them. You can wait for it, and we've got nothing to follow this one up. So we transfer the uh, loud even to get a lot of cash and bro. They could get a lot of ults onto next round as well. D2 are in a rough spot. In their optimal quarters. They could do with this. They could do with, um, I mean, they're going to get a kill. They're going to get a death anyway for Leaf, so it's all good. And we got some scary ults for G2's big buy rounds. All people surviving. Money's good. He got his Kawanzine. One or two away was able to get his as well. Sadhawk with the rolling thunder off that. And now they can just carry that momentum into this round. Leaf does have the, the muddy Valorant. Yeah, I mean, it's the double initiated comps a, are just you know, a bit like that. And anything with Gecko feels a lot like that. It's like a, double, it's, it's like flash into send it. You know, maybe sometimes then you're just down, running at them, short, certainly the most trying to capitalize on your flash. Four players stack up to it, it's right not as clean as a sky dog into a breach stun or whatever it used to be, really. We'll just the sky constant here. getting info. As it's icy, the lone man on a, and he got spotted out by that cave. Because this is the big buy round, right? People get reset, so you would expect to. Sorry, people don't get reset. People would just be eco in. You would expect to see a lot of util on this one. E2. Big focus on crunching over towards showers on this. Icy has a lot to do. 28 HP survives. Ooh. 
Wait, I was going to say, is the fish going to block him? I mean, the guy on the floor going to block him? I mean, no one says capitalize on that. Do they instantly just start sticking the spike? Oh, oh he was close. Oh, it goes in, dude. Oh, it didn't go off, but he lost it. And the wingman's just out here, just insta sticking. Oh, boy. Hold up in heaven. G2 get the defuse. Really nice job from G2. Well, okay, so they. I'll get reset. They They're down to low money. I mean, even if Big Byron comes in, it's stacked up a good amount. This is an important round. I mean, honestly, not many people died in the end, so this would probably just be a force. It just feels like a free Byron. Doesn't matter too much, this one. might have been rotating there into backside and getting that really crucial stun. And even cr more crucial than that, all the ults depleted from last. What's the interaction all between Breach Ult and Gecko defusing? Wingman just dies. Viper's been here towards B-Long. It's allowed to opt to take that early challenge, but won't find any challengers. Juicy K walks straight into that one and Leaf is ready with his feet planted. And that's a oh, massive risk to push into a Viper's pit like that. That's if he's diffusing it, it uh, yeah, pushes but, uh, him up or whatever. Uh, frankly, Stops him diffusing, he disappears. It's extremely tough when you don't have a sky, you don't have the dog to go in there, you don't have a gecko, could use a wingman in a situation Get like that. Get sent so into orbit. Fade. You'll have a prowler for a situation like that. And with this loud comp, getting through a viper's pit is just not Whoa. easy. Whoa. He straight up went for the pre-fire on that. Something to work with here for loud, at least. The trend has the timing, Cowan's in. Yeah, Flash goes in. I mean, this is just a solid setup from uh, G2 on this one. The remainder of Loud split up. Tui's slowly making his way into Hooker now. And Sadak reposting up on the position that he knows G2 feel like they've just cleared. Often likes to do this. Trying to pull a rotate with this one. Give him an option, but far too good on the trigger finger. And they got a save, but money's still good, and it's 2 4 loss bonus. Love that from Trent. Orb gonna be recovered there from yeah, 2-4 for all of these. Money's great. Little advantage that they possibly can. It's gonna be a quick thrash. Seconds left. Yeah. That is one of the bonuses of having Gecko on your team. Having the wingman, you often you're getting the plants, you're getting the diffuses. You can just stack orbs so quickly on that agent. Two is one off that brimstone ultimate. Was waiting to see if maybe he was able to take an engagement. And yeah, they got everything out of that one. So great one round for G2. Dude, I mean, every team has just so much money. Is in they got both Forbes. Yeah, they got the one along as well, right? On this map when you're playing in a post plan, that's basically your redeem a free round card when you use that on either side. You guys are like all talking over one another. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, trying Trouble to get the comms. Perhaps. I think the comms better. Dude, we're getting a lot of replays, man. A lot of replays on uh, team stuff. Knife goes in over towards showers, doesn't hit them, so they kind of know that they create a question mark over towards showers, so they insta group over towards long. B2 is still sticking with the insta smoke over towards A, right? So they're just trying to make this a hard choke point. And that makes a lot of sense, right? When you don't have any of these agents with like a sky dog or a sky flash or a drone, the making a smoke here means that you kind of have to use Utah to bust through. A lot of time you have to commit a lot of it. Is really nice from G2. You can see as well, Valen, he's rotating through spawn, so yeah, I mean, they, three they got everything here. Razor as well. As they got well. Razor and Brimolt. Brimolt's now over towards the site. Flash confirms that they're definitely here. Knife goes in. Brim dodged the knife. Brimolt. Oh. Jonah is going to wait inside this smoke. Playing just outside of elbow. Orbital strikes. Both thrown down here. Pummeling the ground and nothing else. He's a ticker from Sadak, not a stick. Fault line towards wow, that was really cool from Sadak. He comes to double push behind, but someone's watching it. And do they even express, expect less in this off angle? Weird decision from G2, because a lot of the time you want to, like, hard... 
What a stun. So I'll deny choke point here. Do you reckon because the other two had committed so heavy, they didn't want them to cancel, go through the TP? They wanted wanted to let him out onto the site. That's the only thing I can think of because normally teams would just insta all this. Then you're capitalizing on the 30. Everyone's dodging, running back. You can do all your swings. You can get throughs or, uh, through spawn. Very far away from ultimates on their side. Less had the pit up. Didn't feel the need to use it in that situation. He was in that nice position in hookah. So no viper money. I mean viper got hit by the the knife, next. right? And at this point, both teams, you can still, no really I still think the ult the there and then the, the viper can then put up the wall makes sense. Yeah, it doesn't really, it, it would make sense to do the ult off of the tap if there was something after it. And I don't know if they plan to flood and the attack brim ult wrecked it. The way to that threshold, the magic number 12. They would need to exceed in total round count, even in a that's, that's the most likely thing. To get themselves in There's only one person extra to get over towards site. It wasn't like there was many. So well and truly on the way. This has been a competitive half for Vine so far. This time again, Loud do show up on B long. And all comes down. Set up. And they're ready for it. The flash out. Yeah, that's a sick setup. And now they'll fall back behind the wall here, but maybe. There's so many numbers here, and they realize that, so they disrespect the smoke on short, and they take showers control. Sky dog goes in, is most likely they're about to be rotating, and they kind of saw the sky dog though. And seekers is going to be everything. Yeah, just check if there's any luck, as they're all going to go over towards Saint. So much util for the post plant for that KO. <laughs> Dude, every time we switch over to Sadak, he's changing his plant position. And it comes down, Les unleashes it. Sadak here just waiting for the double swing out from showers. Here comes Icy at the same time. Can they make a pincer happen? Nothing to see here with the showstopper, but still plenty of time to work with it. Les receives Leaf. He's trying to Molly goes out early. Les has double Molly. I mean, this is a done rounds. Kawazin gets there. I see out of the picture. We did have a connection off that thrash. Jonah P can't get up any further. And now it's Trent. One HP. One HP to work with. It's not. I feel like G2 need a bit of a timeout here. And I like how G2 were playing that. I think the the Viper went so early as well. What to do to nullify this default from Loud where they're triple pushing up long early off And I missed why the sky double back to him went to sight. Look swings from them and they have that sky flash going at the same time the Dizzy ascends into the skies behind in elbow. And then you could see because of that, the players on A, they're like, hands off, we're going to play full retake. We have the advantage. Also, I think the, the Seekers but maybe should have been saved as well. Pit, like, it should have been go through the TP, then do Seekers. The didn't feel it was necessary to pop before. And now it gets them a really big round win. And G2, they're in a little bit of an awkward economical spot here. They're still going to be able to carry over a couple of rifles into this round. But... They're not going to be able to get up a full buy until the following. It really only occurred as a sound bite in the background, but Thresh was used there. I think it just caught onto Cowan Zine inside U Haul, and there was no ability to chase that up at all. Things started to fall apart. Josh RT rattling off some directives here for G2, who've lost the last couple of rounds in a row and don't have any ultimates to work with here. This might even be a plan for further down the line. Loud already putting on a show for us here. Winning five out of the last seven rounds after dropping the pistol. They're back and they mean business. Josh RT, the experienced coach who joined this squad last year, was crucial in bringing them all the way to Ascension, winning it, qualifying for the Partnership League. And we'll see now how G2 opt to play around this kind of early default that Loud have. Though there's a different layer in it if now. If Loud wins, do they qualify? Yes. A knifing shower, but he's oh, actually this is with the other three players here. I going to say, this the molly goes here, but they had a jump onto it. Okay, yeah, there's the molly that goes here. So they get locked in, so they want them to be locked into this area. Yeah, and this molly stopped everything. Could have been awkward, but G2 still gets staved off now. And Melon has to think twice about really challenging this icy bounds through. But Bambi gets cut down as less is waiting. 
For a moment there, I was I was nervous of the no help moment, but luckily this the three swings came just in Spike time planted. from Loud. Just like we drew it up, baby. <laughs> and fortunately, G2, they also continue to fight in Octagon and take that space. I think they had an opportunity if they just Or is all they get? Yeah, dude, Loud Loud looks really convincing in, in these rounds at the moment. Able to just escape with that full man advantage. And Loud again now. Another round. How many have they strung in a row? It feels like a whole bunch at this point. This is we'll their third, see. but it would be uh, six out of the last eight. They've really come alive on this half right now. Mixing in just small, little different pieces to right. how they're playing this. <laughs> the new sound effects guy. <laughs> yeah, I, I bet you were bet. Yeah, I saw that you were just hoping for the sound to come back. Did not want to. <laughs> did not want to do that segment. Do not want to make the in-game sounds. Okay, G2 at least gave money in this, and uh, I mean, considering they won the pistol, this is great. Yeah, flat. The second flash there just didn't go, didn't go far enough. That'll be the ultimate gift. Their fate in the balance. Send City's fate in the balance. And of course, Loud, their fate in their own hands right now. They just, they need this victory. Derek, I hope the stake was good, Valen. On Derek's dime. G2 here have a bit of ground to make up, though. Started well, but have lost control of this half of the last few rounds. This time, Loud, another variation white. And then just create pressure over towards here, then needs to group up. Now just working back One. a bit later, and you can see again when Jonah P doesn't hear anything, he's gonna use that utility. Oh, and with it gone now, oh. loud, using that breach ultimate to scale into I the mean, site quickly. This is, quickly. A, this is an empty site already. at the moment. This is G2 looking G2 nice. How do we retake this? Retake. Whoa! And he gets so out of there. So much confidence from this man. It's what loud have yeah, for and, and Les two. has double he's Molly. Really he's pretty far away. Bro, look at this. They flood back in. There's a Brim Molly with the stun. That's nice from Louds. The QCK went for an absolute madness on that. They were not expecting it. Crucial for Trent to save the gun at this point. the crowd. Keep running. <laughs> I mean, the economy is just cracked oh. at this point. Oh, and the jig is up, my friend. Tui's heard those footsteps. Trent's on the angle, and he's going to go down. Economy absolutely crushed for G2 heading into the next. Last and this is an elite loud that we're watching right now against a G2 Yeah, this is a great round. It's a little bit of so fake pressure. Stun goes in, knife over towards here, and right? then ins the group up. Despite losing, they took Breach can just kind of tank. I mean, Lotus Breach was just I dumped all the util. From G2. But Breach right, damage into flash, map into map flash map again, map I think, and then Breach all. Like Maybe not the second flash. Because we are headed to Icebox and Lotus next. She choose two best maps. So Loud do need this one on the board. Counting has actually picked up the operator here because their egregious display of 1% wealth. He can just hold out showers with that for a bit. Can afford healthcare in a Brother, the stuns are wrecking them. I wish. We Double flash goes in though, and they clear this. They now know where two of them are, and the, the good news is for Loud, they got both of the sky flashes out and the sky dog. Like there is nothing left for the sky. Some architecture lying in wait. Straight down a short. Less has been able to find himself here. So you two don't know yet. UCK could go all the way showers, get this orb, and then all sight. Like the most obvious call, but we'll see. A and I like from G2. They put both of their B players in hookah because. Jonah, no utility left. They don't know what's happening in long anymore, so they want to hold down that section of the map. But Loud at this point, looks like they're going to be fully ignoring it, save for Sadhawk, who might try to, you know, make a bit of a distraction, perhaps, with the utility, but seems to just be watching for the push out. And now this full execute is going to come in on the A side. GCK dead. No double satchel, notably. Doesn't get to the back of the side. Wants to play in front of these Here with the plan, he gets his all. Two is brought down. That's leap in heaven. Posing a little bit of an issue here for Loud. Zadok, flashpoint. Oh, the little fake peek, and Les is going to be there to follow it up. Nice little two piece there. The one what a shot from Les. And, here's that flank. and at least gets the info. Did he see the second? a good way to employ that showstopper, so that'll go for Nord. Valen's able to repost up in heaven, but it's about Trent and Joni here. Making the way down short. Cummins in, sets a flash up there. But Valen's good for two. 
Yeah, and it was obviously he was flashing for one as well. All right, nicely done from G2 to actually manage to get one. I still think the five is probably too low considering the one pistol, but maybe they can win double pistol. G2 in the buy rounds look good. Um, very loud in the buy rounds look good. been a great individual season for Sadak. I think he's stepped up on a number of crucial rounds for this team and maps where he's really just playing a higher level of mechanics than we've seen from him in the past. And of course, two of the best IGLs tactically here going head to head as well. Yeah, Valen was patient here as well, though. Super patient over towards heaven. Handed that all that responsibility over, which is even more impressive. But there it is. We've got G2 finding there an actual chance for a best of one. I mean, yeah, this game, none more than perhaps EG. We're going to go down to Elizabeth with some very relevant individuals here in the outcome of this game. Yes, and those relevant individuals are Derek, Jojmo, and Foe of EG. You might think they're from G2 with the G2 merch that we are wearing, but no, they are from Evil Geniuses. We have Apoth and Nature waiting over there as well. We're going to talk to these three right now. Um, we love you too. Um, and they're also wearing G2 merch. They are a part of the team. I'm going to talk to you first. Um, my favorite six foot king. When you. Why do people laugh? <laughs> when you're in a moment like this, when this is not in your hands, you have to literally sit here and watch this go down. Like, what is your anxiety level at right now? Uh, it's worse than when I'm actually playing on the stage, but I have full confidence in my boys, you know, so. Worse than playing on the stage. So like you just sitting here, like talking in the chat, it's worse than you like having to like think about everything on stage. Yeah, because I have no control of how the game goes. Mm -hmm. But I mean, like I said, they're, they're, I feel like they're just warming up into it. And I feel like they're going to start rolling in some rounds. Josh, I'm gonna come to you. Obviously, this is your stream. We're talking to your <laughs> lovely people. You've been talked about a lot. You know, Lev, uh, the comm said, you know, you're the last on his list. What are your thoughts on that? Oh, I'm ready for my boy Corbin. Like, <laughs> me and him lived together all last year. So like, you know, we just had that, that bond together. So playing against each other on stage is a whole different aspect, but he knows how I am during, uh, like when I'm full focus. And yeah, my champ form is coming back. So get ready, Corbin. All right, get ready, Corbin. And really quickly to you, Fo, as the assistant coach, you've had to watch these kids play and just play their hearts out. Now you are here with them, sitting with them, watching the game. What is your anxiety level like? Uh, about the same as it is backstage watching them every game. What, and what is that? Uh, very high. Very high. It's higher than playing. It is. Derek's not wrong. Okay. It, it's harder. You're just watching it unfold, and you have to say to yourself, okay, well, whatever happens, happens. All right. Well, we're going to do some breathing exercises. We have a game to get back to, so casters, please take it away. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. I'm quite sure these teams looking on at their fate being decided are feeling it. But now on to the teams that do have an impact on the outcome. Why? We're heading into our second. How's the chances looking? The I mean, the let's see how the let's right see how the pistol round goes, the and then I'll answer it. Oh, ghosts across the board. Five ghosts, and dude, went four classics and armor. <laughs> they just side. all inspecting it. There's a big difference in the initiators on both sides. The G2 running the sky Mate, and the dude, uh, the, the so bundles really changed fluid. teams, man. Whereas with the it really did. Particular spots to hit your flashes, and often same with KO. Of course, you can right click to push somewhere close, but a lot of times you're going to be playing pop flashes for people at different angles as well. So, I'm expecting to see some quality setups here from the loud side, and something I'm going to be paying a, a close eye on as we. Head on to their defensive half here. Cohen Z get a little bit antsy. Little check there. They're actually able to post up watching a short. <laughs> Decent spot. And there's also the counter swing opportunity as Les takes. Did great damage on that. Some non irrelevant damage, rather. Up B long. But G2 still have eyes elsewhere. They don't have that showers control, but Tweed might be looking to concede it here if things don't go right. Snake bite. Oh, it out. That is How on earth does that one hit? They have a pretty good... Oh, they had a pretty good crossfire. A good fast reposition from him. He doesn't look like he's going to hit as well. I mean, how did G2 lose this? Utility to explode back in while those loud players are tapping the spike, trying to get the defuse. They are absolutely ready for this. QCK wants to step up. Trying to let's have some utility here to try and draw something out, but actually wants to drive face sleeve. And he falls quickly. Still falling to deal with on G2 side. The wall comes down. Look the show that. starts. 
Okay. Double pistol. Yeah, that'll that'll do it. Imagine that Sentinels fans done after that. It's a small moment, but they played to their win con there. They played nice and passive. It was trying getting that dizzy back up line. The wall drop with it coming over so they could face. This was wild. CK with a nice shot. He has been playing well. Guys, let's go. Keep it up. Anti eco. We know what to do. Yeah. Well, they definitely look like they know what to do. Solid round from G2. There. Let's see. Passing on their own. Or grouped. Yeah, and they get info. That's two. Do they just insta send it? They at least know it's not a stack. They still have the double flash. Hold up. Nade's pretty solid. Ah, it was like a, it, it was like a half and half, right? Some of them sent it, some of them didn't. With three players, Pansy. Two more dogs and a ghost to with. <laughs> you got nothing but a molly. What the? To his name. You're gonna need that, buddy. And really, on this round, we got an appetizer of what's to come with this loud comp on defense. One of the reasons you run that breach is because B long is really easy to control with the fall line. It gets all of long, as you just saw. So if you hit the right timing with that, and then additionally, maybe if you have a, a KO flash to come over. That raise nade we saw was really effective. There's going to be a lot of trap setups just like that from Loud. So G2 are going to have to be weary of walking into the traps, but also importantly for their attack site to succeed, baiting the right, traps big out, buy rounds. G2 get pretty out, much then, you know, close to. I mean, as close as they were going to get to a perfect bonus because obviously for, for they have free bulldogs. The uh, fish all is out, and that is the main thing that separates everyone at the moment. Slow and steady, G2. And so far, they're descending it over towards the site where there's two. Oh man, this is hard. Fish goes over towards long. Yeah, they tried to knife the fish as well, but they decided to, for it to go long as the rest of them go. What up? I'm from Icy. I mean, this is it. This, this is the bonus. How on earth do you retake this right now? You got QCK on 5 HP. You got a smoke still from Leaf, and you can just throw this over towards spawn. You got a nade still. They all picked up the fish. But yeah, you just got to save this. And it's the best possible thing for G2. This is the snowboarding full effect. And that was a great response from G2. What a call from Valen expecting a B long trap setup like that. They use the thrash to clear up there and just kind of focus their attention then on hookah. If there was a trap set up, that thrash would have pushed them back, and then they would have been swinging out of hookah. I mean, we saw from Sadhawk's kills. POV. And yeah, regardless of the trap set up not being there, Sadhawk was so, so caught off guard from that explosive hit from G2. Bonus round going to be converted, but... Round three fish, again, yeah. They're going to have enough rifles into the... Gotta, the gotta hope for, for a gecko. A just hope the gecko so just gets an extra... At least one. I, I would I would probably opt for another, I'll be honest. They did get a few rifles, but is or at least some kind of change to the ore itself, itself when you, like, dumb now. people and get kills. So that 14 round threshold. See how this went down coming out of hookah? Senna's shaking right now. Let's keep oh, it going. Oh. <laughs> 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 These are yes. tough times for the Sen City, Mitch. Tough, tough times. G2 posted up now with many players outside Hookah again. They're not going to go with the speed they did previously. A flash up long to get some information into Octagon, which Coach Jonah did here with that ping when the bird goes off. And we have just basically the same setup here, yeah. right? Long no, is gonna get the info on long, and then the push is gonna come through hookah. Okay, still a four line. Did not buy too much? I'm not really gonna bother anyone. I see is in QC. Oh, that's a lovely double molly on this. Yeah, man. This attack this attack half is so good from Doom. Flash aftershock to try and create some space in hookah, and he's done so. 
all, all of the utils looking great. Problem is now they have no util, right? They've, I mean, they've literally check it out. They've just util dumped fully. So all they got to do is just trade out here. That's where we're jumping around corners. But we have a good crossfire. Tui's coming through that spawn side. He's gonna run straight into Trent's cross there, but the forward line is gonna make it impossible. Setting up another for Tui's. That three, I see. Can't hold on. How do they recover that? Trent spread. Yeah, I mean they had no alive. util, so they decided the to go for a lot of. Uh, I mean they decided to send player, it over towards sides. To elbow. He was back towards yeah, they pretty much just tunnel visioned on the elbow he kill. That is just ridiculous, Icy. Did they need to do this with the amount of map control they had? Plant for long? Maybe. Probably. I'm not sure they need to go that deep, though. Like, that deep was crazy. They, they had the elbow control. Literally had this, this, and all of sight. Don't really need more at... To push out towards this area is pretty much um, enough. People died though. This is a big swing round. Uh, well, actually saying that, two buy up next. And there's no reaction from this because they only spotted. Did they? Yeah. Already out of the picture. Again, aggressive probes on both extremities in this round for loud. And two people push behind, and it's very fast on the push, but you two should be on top of it that this is going to be a thing. Leaf knows they're going to push somewhere. All goes in. I mean, I would have pretty much all in on this, it feels like. It's great info, too. Do they decide to push back site, or do they fight here? Trent here fancies a bit of the one versus one. No, Leafs joined him, in fact. Dangerous for Tui's. Hard to win out. Cowan's in spots two. He knows there's two inside of you all. Or rather, just one. And Jonah P on the other side of that wall. Fallon wards him off with a spray. Les now wants to step up as... It looks like Cowan Zine has gotten out. That's Poison the plan off. for Loud. They're going to give this one up. They try for something cute on B long. It doesn't pay off. Yeah, and then money gets even better. Right now, they're actually going to be able to get a buy into the next round with two rifles being saved. So smart for them, and frankly, no other real options here heading into the next. Looking at some of the alts at the moment, you can see Trent is just one off from getting another thrash online. I mean, like we mentioned earlier, it's so easy to just stack up Gecko Alt after Gecko Alt. And now they wanted to try to bring a new little play into the fold there, something that G2 wouldn't have been expecting, but QCK is just not able to win out that first duel, and that's really all it comes down to. They wanted to catch out G2, and it just didn't pan out as intended, but listen, I respect the attempt, I respect the idea of going for something different there that they weren't expecting. And we watched QCK. I mean, I don't particularly think that his play style has drastically changed at all. I think I <laughs> points out on the desk, he's like, oh, maybe QCK playing differently. Then chances are dropping fast. I mean, so it, I mean, it was very, it was pretty much never, well, I'm not saying never, but I don't know, I would have given it like 10, 10 percent max. But often just can't even get traded out. Sometimes just With how good G2 have been looking. Yeah, often I think we said 10 I yesterday. Like, I mean, last week aside, last week he stepped up massively for the team against well, he won those Sentinels. Teams. Yeah, he was playing at 15. Yeah, then I, then I backed down. I backed down and said 10 after. Crucially, because oftentimes he's just not winning the duels. He'll, even when he's losing, he'll play with the confidence and take those early fights on defense. He's going to take early fights when he's playing Jet. It's been pretty sick how games off, mean so much at the end of split. Yeah, that's, that's actually now, true. That we got, uh, we lucked out a little bit. Need him to do we did luck out a little bit. Could have been a lot worse than us. Almost the same could be said for Icy. G2 have talked about how he's fit in in terms of... I'm out goes in. So team. what have they got planned? They have to eco next and then at that point it is literally 11-8. So the map's borderline done. I think that's what will take G2 we to get the next judge out. It's raise on bind though. There's a lot of setup required. Judge and hookah for a raise. And that responsibility falls on the rest of the members of these teams. Come <laughs> here. This is look like a late little shower knife. Just how deep are we? Okay, deep enough to spot the sky. Just Jonah being spotted right now. Come and see, and the dust want to get in. 
even behind the fault line being spent. Yeah, it's still kind of like that though. Yeah, and Icy knows that the knife's been used, and now there's no Yuto to stop his ult, so he just sends it in. And was it worth getting the info over towards Showers to lose the only bit of Yuto that actually cancels the uh, raise ult? Probably not. Not even necessary at this point, but that wingman does give Trent the thrash. Won't have to use it in this round. Can save it for the next economy. At this point now, they really take a time out and they didn't talk about the fact that the knife is the only the thing to shut down well the razor. And G2 firmly in control of the game at this point. We're not talking about round thresholds anymore, Wyatt. We're talking about G2 just winning him up and going straight into playoffs, extinguishing the hopes of Sen City. Absolutely right. And at this point, it's got a shout out. Like got a shout out from G2, though. G2 did good. Like, as soon as that knife goes in, they pretty much had the plan, got people ready to go, like, what, five seconds after? They have the tools necessary to carry this game over the finish line. On their map pick, you would have expected them to be the team picking Icebox here. But no, they've went for Bind, which earlier in the season they lost 100 Thieves. They beat MIBR on it. Mixed results though, so it was a little surprising to see them take things here. But if they get this win, the rest of the map pool, Icebox and Lotus, those are definitively their two best maps of the season. And the task will be such an unmeasurable uphill climb hey, fish or if they can't win here on banana the knife again because well. the one that stops it if oh, yeah. it goes yeah, in if it does stop the fish there we go oh oh who the hell is that <laughs> what was he doing <laughs> Did he, could he not hit the molly maybe what the hell is going on? Just walking his way out of showers. And this is just confidence gusto from loud. Could they have taken a safer chance perhaps and just I mean that's nice though. The flash over towards short, that was really cool. And the knife was a lot better on this one. Was it reactive? Yeah, I think it was. That's a lot of confidence to go for that play. And it pays off massively for them. Now carrying all these vandals into the next. Trent's thrash expended as well. And suddenly they've turned the game on, on its head by just, again, taking a high risk, high reward play. Committing to the buy on that round. A variation we haven't seen yet from that on defense. Actually expending utility to slow an inevitable hit. Oh boy, we're sending it. It's actually just going to be a contact. Hey, this is the most perfect call. Again, mixing things no up. Here. They've been so varied in their defensive approach so far. They, they definitely heard the Sky Dog go over towards showers. They know the one pass in the showers that kind of gets confirmed once the orb gets taken. Deekers goes in and the Seekers are all going to get the guys fast behind. And Les has to kill three. Maybe that's enough. We'll see. That was unbelievable though. Fair play. He's actually insane he really is and they know that there's only two on site so they should just go relatively fast Juicy K just had to try to make space here for two weeks. Trying to get out of hookah on a retake is a painful miserable experience two is now knows that without <laughs> the race actually in his options are limited and his chance to save this weapon also a it, slim I mean, one at best. Was great yeah. here against Jonah. He could have <laughs> movement so could have been better in that one. Estimate of his position and then running away is the only thing he can do. He's done it. So gun maintained. And off we go. And it was those seekers from Jonah. Jonah that really threw off Loud's intentions there. What is this too? It looks nice, bro. What do you mean? Also it looks like a snake a or something. Which is really common at this point for the bind meta. And that allows teams to be able to push down out of hookah, push down out of short, flank through market, and not be exposed by, you know, back when there used to be that. I mean, way back when, when there was a chamber trip, for instance. Or sometimes when that cipher is on the map as well. But it was the seekers that exposed that play fully, and then you can right, see last time up for them. From loud, they weren't sure if they should turn back. Keep going for the flank and. 
It's just that small, I mean, I say small piece of utility. It's an ultimate and it's pretty good. <laughs> and it gets them a ton of info. And now at this point, timeout going to be called from Loud That's as fine. they're on death's door here. And a good time to take one for sure. Heading into this round, they've got three ultimates. They have Les's Viper's Pit, Kaunzin's Null Command, and Sadhawk's Rolling Thunder on the breach. Additionally, it looks like they're trying to pick up the operator in the hands of QCK. This is not something that we have seen yet in the server from either team. Well, save for when Kalenzine bought one because he had so much money in the last half of the very last round. Just I mean, they got the enough ults. What do we do? Post the ults are most definitely here. Showers, no? Valor at the moment, one away, so you would yeah, imagine most like likely going everyone's going to try and defend or go aggro for the orbs. The side, perhaps the Viper's Pit just going to go down early in Hookah to control that area of the map. You know, hoping to funnel some players into QCK's op. He picks it up a whole hell of a lot, and he's going to have to get a big kill here. Op is going over towards showers. No flash or anything to set him up. Just the straight up the wall, then drop. Able to play off Kawanzin at least. G2. <laughs> Lined up for this, though. They are waiting for another... It's committed. Push up from the defenders. Definitely They're committed. Right part of the the good off angle, though. Uh-oh. Look at this aggression from him. It's a dangerous spot. Pushed up too far. And it felt like they were ready for this. And with that kill, he gets a uh, Brimmel. Yeah, that's a G2 expecting some kind of aggression. Yeah, they expected at least some kind of aggression. Sadako. Yeah, and big jaw behind her as well. Valen. It definitely not using his ult now. Alright, nicely done. Just a straight up util dump from uh well straight up ult dump from Lance. Four people survive as well, so that one's pretty nice. Now we get a big round. Really well done from Loud there. And now carrying into the next round, they've still saved so many ultimates, and frankly, the aggression got a little out of hand from QCK. The angle he was holding just a moment ago was fine. He wanted to take a little bit more yeah, space. Gotta push up, push the issue just a bit, but it's yeah. to his demise. They recover the offer. Yeah, I mean, now we've got to be fighting for orbs, right? And Surely. again, he's going to be headed towards shower right now. Take a same line. G2 just yeah, not same thing. Just up, just hold over towards showers. We change up the wall to just short from this. Kalenzine, which what the hell is this wall? This is an interesting uh, Viper ult setup. So they know that there was no one actually pushing down off the back of that they are, KO. They are doing it again. Guy dog goes in. They follow up towards showers. Wingman goes out. A nice shot from him. He's still caught in the corner though. We'll have to satchel across. Didn't see the other guy cross. Yeah, I didn't see the other guy cross. Kind of got traded again. What is the chance of him? I was going to say, what's the chance of him expecting that second guy? This time can actually trade. G2 don't have a plan yet. Wingman was Do they just wall up now and then swing? Is that what the plan is? Won't see anything for the wall there. I do like I do like the idea of the wall. I'm thinking they got a little bit. I mean, and maybe they missed the timing. Yeah, this wall's pretty cool though. Playing off the back of the side. Ice is good for it. Sarnak is dead. Now the 2v2 but less has other plans. Trent holding on. It's Trent. Can he get there? Let's comes in from the top row. I mean, shout out to the individuals here. They know if they win this map. Yeah, they, they messed up their plan here a little bit, and I think it might have been a comms thing, or maybe too much fuel was going over towards the Viper, the Viper orb. But the wall makes a lot of sense. They tap the spike, you put the wall up, and you can just kill or just isolate whoever's planting. Interesting. Now it's going to be a timeout called here. 11 11 and G2 have a lot of money still, though. Josh RT has been working with the squad for over a year now since they began in Challengers last year, began that journey to making it into partnerships, the journey to try to make it back to an international land, which they had a taste of right at the beginning of this team's lifespan years ago at Reykjavik. They were this promised team of young upcoming Keeper, players, and they couldn't live up to the pressure at that land. 
and they've been clawing and fighting for a way back there, staying together as a unit for years to do so. These players had tons of offers to go to other teams in partnerships last year, but they said no, they stuck together. They've made it all this way now, that core of Valen, Trent, and Jonah P. And they stuck together as five. Much longer than many other teams. They really, really I mean, We got some orts to play with. G2 definitely have the advantage at the moment. We get a 2 9 loss bonus on there, so only two of them will get not a full buy. That's it. it is. I like this from Loud, though. They got so many orts. Are they sending it? And it's after a timeout when G2 are focusing on their new plan. Is there someone in G2 that says that they might go aggro? Are they potentially ready for this? Gonna be a pop here to be long. They're gonna push the smoke even. Let's try to throw some shots in behind them. But that's devastating. Oh, it's I'm not devastating sure there was. Yeah, and there go, they go a lot of the orts with it, and what an absolute call from Sadak here. It didn't work as intended, but this time the swing is more decisive. The trades there, more aggressive. Two E's in trouble. Almost threw his life away, caught up by the Molly and the Dizzy, but Les picks up the angle, and it's just a weak leaf left alone. Take it. Weak breeze to blow Huge round from them. That was really, really good. I even think someone was playing anti-flash here. I'm not entirely sure. They ended up lining up. What are you guys scheming might, with this timeout right now? You got all these alts. Get a replay for this. Big thing. All right, cool. We are just going to I mean, they were anti flash to be fair, at least one of them. Absolutely Because those two weren't blind there. And Sodhawk gets a two piece off of it. What a call. What a, again, the confidence from these guys. Bloody diabolical from Sodhawk, if I'm honest with you. G2 had it all uh, right I mean, they might go aggro one. again. Yes, There's so many alts here. They've got four ultimates in this last round. If they can't convert this, and take this thing to OT, that would be a travesty. Trent. This guy just 180 and knife. A great map. Yeah. It's gonna take more though. <laughs> oh, no. Great knife. Instantly shuts the thrash down. Leaf pulls out. I see though one at the side with the showstopper. He still went for it in the end. What the? Keeping himself out of harm's way as the showstopper whizzes past his left ear. Sarnak finds Icy, but Valen is going to be there. Cowan's being punished by the orbital strike. Big jaw here. Sarnak eventually falling. Two each challenge is in time. It's a one for one. Two players on either side. Oh my god. I want to delete both of the Razorts from this round. Holy hell. Leaf right now. Oh my god. They could play this so well. Jonah can plant. Get the Seekers. Leaf right now is the pit down. Huge advantage coming into the end. Really heads up. Small play from Jonah that's going to pay off massively. They know about this QCK flight now. Yeah, the Seekers is huge, bro. By the Seekers. His timing's off, too. He's way behind Les. There. Oh, boy. Les pings it. Got no flash for this, right? Gets into you, Hall. There was no pick out. What is that straight bullet? <laughs> 